Are you looking for real applications for two point perspective? Are you sick of drawing just lame boxes all the time? You wanna learn how to use this concept in your illustrations, in your comics, in your concept art? Well, you're gonna love today's tutorial. What's up y'all, this is The Art Mentor. My name is Sean, I'm a veteran art teacher and freelance artist, and today I'm gonna give you a step-by-step -step tutorial so that you can use Two Point Perspective to create the backgrounds for anything that you desire, and it's gonna start right now. So what's gonna be different in this tutorial versus other ones I've seen before is that I wanna give you a real application for this. So when you're browsing and you're looking through social media and you're looking on Google at all these amazing environments and you're looking at these backgrounds and your favorite comics and your favorite mangas and your favorite video games, this is what it's all rooted in. This is what it's all based in. And this is honestly one of the most top tier skill sets to have and how it's really gonna level up your skill set. So before we get started, let's just review some key essential terms and information that you need to know. First off is that everything in a two-point perspective drawing is gonna start off by establishing your horizon line, which again, just simply means this is where you're looking. This is the eye level in a perspective drawn. Now remember, at either end of your horizon line, those are where your vanishing points are. And your vanishing points are where all of your lines line up in a two-point perspective drawing. In two-point perspective, we always start off with a vertical line. Vertical line indicates a corner. This can be an interior or an exterior corner, doesn't matter, but we always start off with that. Then. All lines that go to our vanishing point are called orthogonal lines. Now remember, if you're ever confused as to which goes which, what goes where, very simple concept. Left goes left, right goes right, and that's all. One, another really important thing to remember is that anything above the horizon line, we're gonna see the bottom of it. Anything below the horizon line, we will see the top of it. So here's our overall inspiration for today. We're gonna be creating this Viking-esque village on the water. Now this video is meant for you to be able to draw along with me, so pause me, rewind me if something doesn't make sense, just go ahead and watch it again. And you can go ahead and skip ahead or go backwards in time to anything because I have chapters it all out just to make it as easy as possible for you. So to start off our two point perspective drawing, what we always wanna do is go ahead and establish our horizon line so we can get our two vanishing points. So for this one, I'm gonna go ahead and place this not directly in the center, but a little lower than that to show off what I need to on this. So I'm gonna place it yeah, right about here, boom. And then at the edge of that horizon line, those are gonna be our vanishing points, okay? So once you have that, you can go ahead and erase the rest of this entire line. We don't need it. And remember, as we're going through everything today, you wanna to draw incredibly lightly because we're gonna make a crap load of lines that you do not need to be permanent, nor do you want. So our next step on here is to create our vertical line because remember that everything in two-point perspective starts with a corner. So I'm gonna place this not centered, but a little bit askew from the center, probably right about here. And this is gonna run a little bit below the horizon line. I'm gonna bring it up a little bit right about there. Go ahead and do that. All right, so next, let's go ahead and follow our basic principle of left goes left and right goes right. All right, now what we wanna do is we typically go ahead and we end it. So let's define our edges. So one here, one here, one vertical line, vertical line. So now along the lines of making this way cooler and way more interesting, let's go ahead and add in some more buildings here because again, this is really basic and you've probably seen this done. Or if you have not, let me just tell you, this is the most basic way of doing this. So let's go ahead and add some more buildings. I'm gonna add one right here and right here because I don't like this force perspective effect. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna start right here on the left and match these up to the right. These ones on the right are gonna match up to the left vanishing point. Here we go. All right, so what I did there was again, we just established a few orthogonal lines going to our vanishing points. These ones match up to the right, these ones match up to the left. So now let's go ahead and define some edges. This, just so you know, this is gonna be a wall. This will be a wall. This will be a roof line as well. All 
All right, so in doing this, you'll notice that I just made a couple of random diagonal lines. This is gonna be for a roof curve. It doesn't need to have its own vanishing point for this type of drawing. But yeah, now you can start to see that this is gonna feel like a more lived in, more uh, realistic space here. And that's what we wanna do here. So now I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna erase some of these lines and then we'll proceed. With this type of house and with what I'm trying to do here is I want to make this look like a, a Viking-esque village. So there typically are going to be some long wooden beams that are going to extend out beyond the roof line. And also because this is above the horizon line, I should see underneath it as well. So I'm going to make a couple orthogonal lines and have this beam come out a little bit longer. And then I'm also going to make it so that I can see underneath it. Now it definitely helps to have a clear ruler like the one I'm using for more advanced type of perspective drawings like this because you can see through it, but if you don't, it's not a big deal. You just have to kind of move it around, move from left to right so you can kind of see what you're doing. That's just my advice and my personal preference. All right, so let me just explain how we're gonna do the undersides of these because we're gonna see this effect quite a few times in this drawing here. But essentially, we exposed the under part of this because again, it's underneath the horizon line. So what you wanna do is match up that corner because again, this is a vertical line. So then we know it has to go to the right. So this matches up to my right vanishing point right here. And this one matches up from this vertical line over to my left vanishing point. And then to finish it to show, hey, how far back, what's the depth on these? We're just gonna follow our standard procedure where we're gonna match up over here to the right boom and then this side will again just like when we made the rest of the house all these lines should be going the same direction for the most part and we want to go ahead and match that up to our left vanishing point and boom there we go now we can see realistically the underside of this roof overhang which is very nice now let's move on Hey, how am I doing so far? Let me know down below in the comments because I'd love to hear what you think or anything that you would like to learn how to draw in perspective. I'm there for you on that because what matters to you matters to me. And if you could please help support my channel by liking, subscribing, hitting that notification bell. And if you find this helpful, make sure that you please go ahead and share it to help support my channel. Now let's get back to it. Next, what I wanna do is I wanna make this building right here really stand out. So I'm gonna give it a really unique architectural element with a, a big, cool gabled roof. So this is gonna be a triangular roof. And just to kind of spot you on this, a lot of times what people will do incorrectly is they'll go ahead and just like draw a triangle. And this is not the right way that you should do it because it's gonna be out of whack. And that point on that gable is gonna to be totally incorrectly placed. So here's the right way to do it. What you wanna do is after you draw your building, just like I have, you wanna go ahead and make another orthogonal line for how high up you want it to come. So in my case, yeah, I'm gonna want mine to come right about here. To create the point for the gable on this, go ahead and find visually the middle of this, which for me is gonna be right here, boom. And then I can use that as a point to create the rest of my gable really cleanly and without any pain. So as you can see here, this is not gonna look like a nice and equilateral triangle, okay? It's gonna go along on one side than the other, and that's exactly what it should produce, okay? So now we don't need this part, so go ahead and erase that. So now we can start to see how this is all shaping up and coming together. We've got three different buildings here. I'm gonna make them way more elaborate than this, and so are you two. Let's jump into that. First off, what I wanna do is I wanna go ahead and I wanna create a porch right here, and I also wanna go ahead and create a roof right here. Let me walk you through that. We're gonna do this in a few other places too. So starting off with the roof, which would kind of be the overhang here, okay? Again, the look at this face right here. This whole face is going to the left vanishing point. That tells you that any diagonal looking lines need to be going this way. Any orthogonal lines need to be going to this side because this face right here is in two point perspective to the left vanishing point. So you can see I made a couple orthogonal lines I'm just looking to make sure as I'm doing this that I'm gonna have enough space for some kind of a door. I'm actually gonna go ahead and pull these out a little bit longer to the right, just to balance it out, just to make it a little bit more symmetrical. All right, so that's looking pretty good right there. Now, in order to create the angle for this roof, this is not, again, need to go to a vanishing point. I'm gonna go ahead and just create some diagonal line just to fill this in here. To give you a tip though, this angle should be much more severe than this angle right here. And I'm not matching this up to any particular vanishing point. I'm just going off of what I know looks good. So 
right here, we're looking good. Now, again, this is not a paper thin element to this building, okay? This can't exist like that. It's not fabric. So I wanna show some depth on that. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna repeat this orthogonal line to the left vanishing point. Now I'm gonna go ahead and draw some vertical lines as well as draw the diagonal line that's gonna go here and another vertical line. So here now you can start to see exactly what this is gonna look like. It looks nice and three dimensional. And again, as we go through every component of this, I wanna teach you about a lot of different parts in architecture that you can utilize in your environments, in your concept designs, and in your backgrounds for your characters and illustrations. So now let's go ahead and create a porch right here. And I'm gonna go ahead and match this up to my left vanishing point because again, this whole face lines up to the left vanishing point. So I only need to make one orthogonal line at this point in time, which is gonna be right here. Drag that one out. Now, I wanna show how this connects to the house. This is going to be an orthogonal line to this vanishing point. So here you can see how this is gonna get set up here. And now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna create a walkway here. What I just decided in doing this is that I wanted to make this look like a fishing kind of village. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and create a nice walkway in between all these buildings here so that people can go to and from it pretty easily. So let's check out how we're gonna do this. So now this is gonna run into a road and this is gonna go ahead and match up to the left vanishing point. Okay, so I'm gonna continue this out here. I'm gonna continue this over to here, the left vanishing point, that's good. And I'm also gonna go ahead and repeat that for right here as well. This is gonna be right here. Good, so now we can kinda of see that's a big walkway. Maybe this is built on top of water. So now, in order to create here and here, following similar procedures, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and match up to this right vanishing point as I create this next set of lines for this. So I want this to give a little bit of space in between each building. So here we go, we're gonna do one here. And I'm gonna have this run directly across the bottom of this back building here. And directly right across here too and two. Good. So we can kind of see that these would be the walkways that people would use. And then these spots right here would be where there is actual standing water right there. This is always how you want to set things up in a perspective is you want to just kind of block things in very simplistically. And now we're going to go back and we're going to add a bunch of depth into all of these. Okay. Let's make a major architectural element that you should definitely have on any building that we can see here, which would be, oh, I don't know. How about a door? Now I'm gonna show you how to take this from a really simple looking door into a more extravagant looking door and how you can stylize it in this video. So let's do this. To start out a door, what you wanna do is create a couple vertical lines there. These will act as our corners. I want this to be a pretty normal sized door. So one and two, there we go. So now this looks a little wide here and that's fine. This would be the nice overhang that would happen here. Okay, so now let's go to the next step. How do we make this look three dimensional? Because if you just draw a door like this, or if we put another door here or another door on the opposite side of this, if we could see it, this looks really, really, really lame. You wanna start by creating a frame. So in two point perspective, what I recommend that you do is you make an orthogonal line because the frame is gonna come down onto the floor space. Then we're gonna create some vertical lines up. So watch me and follow along with me. Now remember that as you're doing this, that the left door frame should be smaller than the right door frame width because it is further away from us. Remember that. And also remember that the bottom orthogonal line should be really minor. All right, so now that we have this, now we can go ahead and show how far back, how recessed is it until it hits that. And you can see this is still a little tiny space here. So we're gonna go ahead and follow this procedure so that we have a vertical line. We're gonna match it up to the right vanishing point. All right, we're gonna do that for both of these, just a little tiny bit. It seems really minuscule, but it makes a huge impact. We're gonna do this on both of them as well. So until it hits the house right there. Now, where this happens, we're gonna go ahead and we are going to draw a vertical line up. All right, now you see it, right? Yeah, we're starting to see this nice three-dimensional aspect to this because we showed the outside edges of it and we showed the depth on it. So now it's starting to look more realistic, huh? Right, 
So now we just gotta go ahead and draw a nice line for the door. I'm gonna make this a double door, what that? Now, remember that when you draw that line, it should go more to the left than the right. Don't make it perfectly centered because it is skewed because of perspective. All right, so my next step here is I wanna go ahead and I wanna create some kind of a roof line right here. I want this to be a big focal point in this entire drawing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and create yeah, a nice little overhanging roof right here. And then I'm gonna show you how to make some pillars that go down to the ground. So, all right, so for the next step, we're gonna go ahead and create a roof right here. So go ahead and start by making two orthogonal lines for that. That will be the top of the roof. By the way, these are gonna go to the right vanishing point. Why? Because again, this entire face is facing the right vanishing point. So we wanna make sure that everything lines up into this perspective. All right, next, go ahead and make this orthogonal line, it's gonna to go to the left vanishing point. Again, this goes to the left vanishing point, why? Simply because this is an opposite face from the rest of the direction of this building, which is facing to the right. So this has to go then to the left vanishing point, and then this is just a random diagonal line just to define what's the angle of the roof. What's the pitch of it? So now the next step is you wanna go ahead and create an orthogonal line to establish where's the bottom of this. And again, we see the bottom of the roof because it is above the horizon line. So go ahead and match it up to your right vanishing point and you'll get something looking like that. Very good. Last step here, I just have to go ahead and create another diagonal line just to show, hey, where's that end? This is gonna be more severe than my other one, by the way. All right, so for the next step, I'm gonna go ahead and wanna create a pillar right here. So let's make some vertical lines to show the thickness and then we'll move on. All right, so now this is gonna be curved like I wanted to. A popular issue that people have concerns with is how do you make the curves on this? Well, it's pretty simple. This goes above the horizon line. Therefore, I'm gonna get an upward curve like that. And this goes below the horizon line. So therefore, I create a downward curve like this. Pretty simple. If it were at the horizon line, it would just be a straight line, okay? So now, if we're gonna make a line of pillars and assuming that they're not janky and they're all gonna be the same, then what I would actually wanna do here is make an orthogonal line to the right because of the rest of the face again. And I'm also gonna do that for the top as well and just make sure that they start to get a little bit thinner as they go back into space. So now, as you're doing this step, make sure you draw this, these lines incredibly lightly because you need to erase them when you're done. These are only for structural purposes. All right, so here's where we're ending it for today. Make sure that you watch part two when it comes out, along with these other videos on how to be a better artist and be better at drawing right here.